Well, we need solar subsidies because fossil fuel generators are subsidised and because fossil fuel generators put out carbon and the externalities. And where solar does not have any externalities, um, we need to incentivise people to go solar and we need to put a cost um, on the effects that carbon has on the environment. Because the air that we breathe and the water we drink is of huge value to us and we must, must put a price around the quality of those elements. I think subsidising solar uh, will build an industry um, that we can be very proud of and be one of the leaders in the world in terms of solar technology. We're the sunniest continent on earth. Every, all Australians know that and know how lucky we are and we should harness this sunburnt land. What a feed-in tariff rate should be based upon is a very interesting question because it raises the question as to why do we need a feed-in tariff at all? And the reason we need a feed-in tariff is to guarantee returns for investors in solar panels or solar power systems. And because it, utilities may have different agendas, it's hard to determine exactly what returns a homeowner or a business would receive if they, t if they install solar panels or solar power systems on their premises without, without a feeding tariff in existence. Because that guarantees the rate, it's mandated by the government, and they are comfortable to invest their funds in solar, um, solar technology on their properties now with that assurity of returns on the system. To calculate the exact rate of what a feeding tariff, a gross feeding tariff should be, we need to take into account the solar radiation or the location of the solar power system, because different locations in Australia receive different numbers of sun hours, and that obviously affects the performance of the system and the output of the system. And same is um, the actual cost of the systems, because as we all know, solar panels are coming down in price, we're getting efficiency improvements. So as the price of, of systems reduces and the performance or the output of systems improves, therefore the rate can reduce further. But the main point is that we need a feeding, rate, feeding tariff rate to guarantee returns for homeowners or businesses that install solar panels. Yes, yeah, so there's different levels of grid parity. Um, there's grid parity at the retail level. The retail level is when we talk about solar panels being installed on the rooftop of the home or the business where electricity is, is consumed or embedded generation. Embedded generation, we're basically at grid parity now. Um, the, the solar systems have 25 year warranties and if you look at the cost of electricity over a high performing system over let's say 15 years, you can see that the cost per kilowatt is on par with what those businesses or homeowners pay today for the electricity. If we talk about electricity at the wholesale level, at utility scale, and we were to install solar panels next to a coal power station and be forced to use the electricity related infrastructure, the poles and the wires, then we're not at grid parity yet. But over the next 10 years, with the advancements in solar technology and third generation solar technology investment, within 10 years, we should be at grid parity um, at the utility scale against coal and gas-fired power stations. So when you, renewable energies can definitely be a full replacement for fossil fuel power generation in Australia. Here at Energy Matters, we're really passionate about empowering change via the use of solar technology. And I encourage all Australians to join the energy revolution.